Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so no funny haha -ha intro for today's video. Um, I just don't think that it's appropriate in the context of what I'm going to be talking about in this video today. And this is actually a video that I've been asked to make by tons of people. Um, and in all honesty, I, I, I just am so confused and um, just baffled and... I really, to be honest with you, I, I don't really know what to say and I don't really know what people want me to respond to or to say. There's just so much. There's so much. And um, I titled this video something to the effect of the this Colleen Ballinger ordeal just gets worse and worse um, because it does. And it just, I feel like with every turn, it's just more and more complicated and confusing and um, I, I really I'm at this point where I don't even really know what to say um, and this is for me and I think for people that have watched my channel for a long time you guys know that I like to cover what I assume to be funny haha -ha, drama drama and um, lighthearted drama and flip a fan and talk on the drama phone and make jokes and things like that. This is, this is not the kind of uh, topics that I like to cover over on this channel. And I do think it's important. And I was asked by tons of people to cover this video that Swoop did and to respond to this video. So I'm going to do this video um, because so many people asked me to. It was... Yesterday I did a video about Jaclyn Hill and Jen Gerard coming out and speaking about Jaclyn Hill and the video was literally flooded with people saying, you know, please talk about this Johnny Silvestri and situation and what Swoop uh, uncovered in her documentary video and things like that. And so last night I sat down. Now I have to be completely transparent and say that I have never watched one of Swoop's videos before, um, but she has greatly earned um, a, a viewer over here. Um, I had said on my vlog last night, so every day I vlog on my vlog channel, and um, I had said that I just wanted to have a really relaxing evening and I wanted to listen to my cozy mystery on my Audible and that I wanted to find some kind of true crime documentary to watch. And um, for those of you that don't know, I have a true crime book club that I run um, with my good Judy Mel. Hey Mel, how are you? And if you want to join it, it's listed below. And I watch tons of true crime documentaries. And I was saying on my vlog last night that I felt like I had seen everything that was pretty much out there, you know? And that I wanted to see something that was like one to four episodes or, you know, a, a, like a one and done documentary movie. Something that I hadn't seen before that I could get into and I could really watch. And so, in all honesty, I was getting ready to take a nap last night and um, so I could get up and I could watch some shows. And um, I thought, you know what, enough people have asked me to watch this Swoop video that um, I'm going to start it and see what I think. And I got about an hour and a half into it, and I, I was so tired, and I was so exhausted, and I just was so overwhelmed. I can't even, first of all, I just have to say, and just watching this stuff, and me covering it lightly, not doing deep dive investigations, but in me just responding to what is out there, it has played so heavy on my heart. Um... I just feel so bad for the true victims out there, um, and for Swoop and her team for doing all of this investigation and um, really deep diving into the truth. I, I just can't even imagine. Um, you know, it. I know it probably doesn't seem like it, but when I sit down and I film a video and, I, and I'm talking about. Um, a James Charles video in the Cosmopolitan or the Cosmo or the Colleen Ballinger article in Vanity Fair or I'm talking about these topics, even though it's not happening to me, and, and I greatly understand that, it still weighs really, really heavy on my heart. And um, you know, uh and and so watching this last night, I had to take a break from it. I had to take a break and lay down for a little bit. It, it just was a lot. It just, in all honesty, it was a lot. And 
um, I just was like, oh my god, I can't believe this. This is just unreal. So, um, I took some notes. Now, I want to say this. Well, I'll say this in just a second, but, um, like I said, I've never watched her before. So, I didn't really know what to expect in watching one of Swoop's videos. They're these very intense, and I went through and I kind of looked at her canon of videos, and she does a lot of true crime and covers... Um, really important topics that are going on on YouTube and um, pop culture and things like that and does these like deep dive investigations and presents them in the form of a documentary and I just want to say you know for all of you out there that years ago um, and I think I even kind of fed into this a little bit said that you know Shane Dawf Dawson and his series with Jeffree Star really like he, he deserved like a Netflix series and things like that now I have to tell you I have watched I mean, literally almost every single true crime documentary that is on the top 50 out there, right? And even more than that, I've watched all the bad ones, too. You know, the ones that aren't good. And, um... Swoop and the way that she presents the information and the way that she takes accountability for the information, which I think is important, <clears throat> as well as the way that she honors the true victims and the people that are affected by the story, is done in such an eloquent manner that if anybody deserves a documentary series on Netflix, it is Swoop. I was absolutely blown away. Having never watched any of her videos before, I was blown away by this video. Absolutely blown away, you know? Um, even when she would come out with information that she said was alleged, she would explain why she was saying that it was alleged. She would go back and she would explain. I mean, she went back and explained how she found... I mean, it was unbelievable to me. She went and explained how she found the information, the links that she went to to find the information, how she double and triple checked the information out. I mean, I just was like, this is unbelievable, right? So, for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, um, Swoop has done, so far, a three-part series on the Colleen Ballinger allegations. And, um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Colleen Ballinger allegations, I mean, watch my past 15 videos that I've done about it. Watch Swoop's videos about it. Watch Adam McIntyre's videos about it. There's so many people that have talked about it at this point. Read the articles about it. Don't read the Vanity Fair article, because that one's a, a puff piece in defense of Colleen Ballinger. Um, but uh, there's so much information out there that I'm not going to get into all of that today. I, I'm really just going to talk about Swoop's video today and kind of my response to it. Um, so basically, to just break it down into like one sentence, what the video did was... Okay, so for those of you that don't know, like I said, I wasn't going to get into a deep explanation about this, but there have been um, several people that have come out that have alleged any inappropriate behavior um, with Colleen Ballinger when they were minors. And, um, uh, and they've had factual evidence with this of group chats and the conversations that she was having there and, and DMs that she was having and private DMs and things that she would send them and, and on and on and on, right? Okay, one of these um, people that came out and spoke, his name was Johnny, Johnny Silvestri. And... Um, at the time that Adam McIntyre was talking a lot about his allegations about, about Colleen Ballinger, Johnny Silvestri came out and started making very similar allegations about Colleen Ballinger's ex-husband, um, Josh David Evans. And very, very similar. And it was interesting, you know, as a person that kind of watches this stuff go on behind the scenes. And, and, and I had included Johnny... Um, and when I, when, when I say the, you know, the victim's names and things like that, I had included Johnny in that because I had believed at that time, um, without doing my own, my own investigation, and I, I, not that he's watching this video, but to Josh David Evans, I want to say I apologize greatly. Um, I, I should have done an in, in investigation into that and, and looked deeper into it. But even just watching it from the sidelines, you know, and this is something that I do and, you know, I'll, I'll see something pop up and then I'll see something that pop up over here and I'll be like, oh, that's interesting. Like those kind of statements contradict each other and whatever. I mean, I think when you've been a drama commentary T gossip channel for as long as I have, it's just kind of like you kind of just see these things, right? Um, it's kind of like the back of your hand a little bit. And what I noticed over time was 
things that Adam McIntyre talked about in his response video and also talked about in the video because Swoop interviewed Adam McIntyre as well was that Adam McIntyre would say something and then within 12 hours Johnny Silvestri would make a very similar allegation to uh, against Josh David Evans, uh, Colin Ballinger's ex-husband. And it was so, it, it was, you could almost kind of like put them side by side and you could kind of see it go on, right? And at some point, it seemed, it seemed to me that it was kind of like this, Johnny was playing kind of this one-up men game with Adam McIntyre about, um, their their allegations and you know who had the worst allegations and things like that and, and I think at one point in Swoop's uh, video I can't I can't remember exactly what she called it but she called it something like the Victim Olympics or something like that that Johnny was kind of playing this game of like who had the worst story which is a major part of this documentary or this video series which I call a documentary it, it came across it's four it's almost four hours long you know it, it seems like a documentary and um it is a documentary it really is and um and um and Johnny had said things to Adam about like his story not being as important as Johnny's story and even said certain things to Swoop who she is a um and I'm not sure anything that she didn't say in her video but she identifies as um uh a survivor of 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 SA and DV and things like that and um he said some very hurtful statements to her and other people within those communities of um you know kind of like well he had his time to come out and talk about it talking about josh david evans coming out and talking about him being a victim of dv with coin um ballinger and things like that and basically saying that there was like a time stamp on when you could come out and talk about these things and um kind of it didn't kind of really minimized um, victims of SA and saying that, um, like, his experience of Josh David Evans allegedly, um, using his end, his end game being wanting power over him to be, um, that that was greater than victims of SA and that that would be kind of like just, a, I think his words were cut and dry. Um, I mean, it was so hard to watch. Uh, his his lack of awareness um, is just unbelievable to me. And he he would make statements, which I'm going to get to in a second. He would make statements about things, and then he would smirk and he would smile, and it was really uncomfortable to watch. Um, and, and you know, she even said in there, "I'm going to leave that up to a body expert." to explain, but I mean, anybody watching it, he would make an, a very uncomfortable statement about something that had happened, and then he would smirk or smile. Almost kind of like he was taking satisfaction in sharing these horrific stories. Um, you know, w which has never been my experience. So, I, I don't know, like, it, was, it just was unbelievable to me, the statements he made. Um, she shows that, you know, none of the evidence really added up that he claims that Josh David Evans groomed him, um, that the ages don't match, and that he was over the age of 18 during much of the time that he said these things, but he claimed that he was 17, that he really couldn't come out with a definitive answer um, as to uh, why he believed that Josh David Evans um, groomed him. And, and what it really ap appeared to be in the video when you watched it was that uh, that Johnny Silvestri developed some kind of strange attraction towards Josh David Evans and that Josh David Evans, and I'm just speaking to this video, I know a lot of people take issue with him, um, and in all honesty, after watching this video, I feel horrible for him. I, I, I To have these depths of allegations go on, and Josh David Evans just passed three years sober, and I wanna say congratulations on that, you know? Um, I remember when he and Colleen Ballinger got divorced and he completely stepped away from the internet and gave up everything and, and he talked, you know, to Swoop about wanting to possibly take his life and that he was depressed and all, I mean, to then have to have all of these false allegations 
come out towards him is just, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And at three years sober, and I remember myself, I've been sober 28 and a half years, and I'm actively involved in a 12-step program and have a sponsor and work steps and things like that in a 12-step program. And I can remember myself at three years old, at three years old, at three years sober. And that's a very fragile time, right? Like, you're just starting to get your life back. You know, you're just starting to realize how to acclimate to the real world as a sober person and to then have to deal with this on this kind of level and Johnny's attitude to that was well then just delete your Twitter you know like I mean they didn't talk specifically about that but his attitude about if he can't handle it is just delete your Twitter you know when this Johnny had basically been gunning him for months on end I mean just countless countless tweets and swoop showed this in her video so Johnny was one of these people that came out with these allegations, and um, and like I said, I noticed that when I was watching it all go down, that it was it was just I don't know there was a, a lot of um, allegations without any merit. Where on the other side, for the other victims that were you know talking about Colleen Ballinger they had a lot of factual evidence. That was one of the first things I noticed, was that Johnny was making these claims, but then he would throw up like um, what he thought was evidence, but it didn't appear to me that it was evidence. And what was interesting was um, that in, in watching it, it was it, it was like all go kind of go down in real time. Um, I think what really happened was that there were so many people, and I think he banked on this, that really were caught up with the story of the Colleen Ballinger allegations and all of the people that were involved in that situation, her family members and her her friend Corey, that they weren't going to question him. And, and I think he banked on that, that he could just come out and make this claim without really any factual evidence and people were just going to believe him. And that's exactly what happened. And it's really sad, you know, that a man's reputation was defamed. And, um, and and Swoop really basically says in this video that if Josh David Evans wanted to, I mean, she shows it, right, that he could take legal recourse if he wanted to. Um, so she goes into this video, and I don't want to get into all the video. I mean, to be honest with you, so this is what I wrote. Basically, the video proved that Johnny's accusations against Colleen's ex-husband, Josh David Evans, were completely baseless and without factual evidence. And, um, you know, I, I think she said everything that needed to be said in the video. I don't feel like I need to go over each thing and, and say what I was surprised about and, you know, on and on and on. And in all honesty, I'm surprised by all of it. I, I'm confused by all of it. And I think that Johnny has a lot of explaining to do. A lot of explaining. Especially when you have come out for months and months and months and demanded explanations and responses from people. And now you're part of this. And, and a lot of what he... Part of what was going on was that he was sitting here talking about how adults shouldn't have friendships with children and adults shouldn't be interacting with kids and this and that and whatever when at the same time up till even just recently um, I mean she proves this in her video he has been engaging in very similar behaviors and so basically what she proves is if his definition of grooming uh, by Josh David Evans is mentorship of a youth then Johnny is just as much or more to blame because of his relationships. Um, so it's like absolute hypocrisy is what it is. And, um, you know, and I mean, like I said, the video was four hours long. And so I can't get into everything. I just, to be honest with you, watching it just made me very, very sad. And, um, and I really don't know what to say about a lot of it. I mean, um... I think, you know, I think one thing that people don't understand when I cover any kind of drama, and I don't consider this drama, I've made that very clear on my channel that I don't consider the situation that's going on drama, right? Um, I think it, it's very serious and um, I think it deserves a serious response. But in any video that I make over here, right, like in talking about somebody, one of the things that's always in the back of my head is what's their motive. Like, I, I always ask myself that, right? And, and part of that is because in recovery, one of the things that we are taught, and I was taught this day one in recovery is, 
to ask yourself what are your motives, you know? Like, if, if you're going to make amends to somebody, it, are you making amends because you really want to right the wrongs of your past, or are you making amends because it's selfish, for example, right? Like, like one of the examples we give is that maybe sometimes it's not right to make an amends to an ex, because are you just trying to show them that, look, I got my stuff together now, right? So, you know, that would, like, be something where we would question what's your motive. Or, you know, for many different things in, in our lives, we ask ourselves, like, my sponsor says to me all the time like what's your motive like what do you what why are you doing this and I think that that's so programmed into my head that you know whether I'm talking about you know any of these people out there that I talk about um I always ask myself in the back of my head what's their motive like I'm confused and so in watching all of this of this situation where um you know it was interesting to me in looking at and, and like I said, I mean, it really played out, to be honest with you, and, and I hate kind of diminishing it to this. Not that there's any diminishing of actual victims in true crime stories, because I don't think that there should be. And like I said, like, I think it's very important, and this is one of the things that we do in our book club, our true crime book club, is to make sure that the victims are honored in those stories. Um, and, and I thought Swoop did a fantastic job of that. One of the things that... Um, is interesting is the timing of it. So there, okay, so Johnny had a falling out with the Colleen Ballinger camp, okay? Then he had a falling out with this friend of his, this Tim guy that I don't even understand the story fully, but it was somebody else that was part of all of this that was doing very questionable behavior as well. That was in like January, okay? And then Adam came out with this story, and, and I think that this is like one piece that people forget a lot. Adam didn't just come out with a story all of a sudden. Like, you know, people always want to say, well, why is Adam coming up with this again, right? Like, Cody Tyler came out with this story. You know, this, and, and Cody Tyler can't shut her mouth even though she's deplatformed herself. Um, uh, Cody came out again, I think yesterday, and made a statement about this whole situation and whatever. And I'm just like, okay, you deplatformed yourself, you need to stay deplatformed, right? Like you've done enough damage. And that was one of the things that Swoop said at the end of the video was that a lot of these people, these these victims of Johnny's, that were, because he's stealing stories of actual victims and making them his own, or he's sharing their stories without their consent and they're asking him not to because they're having to relive the trauma all over again. Which is so damaging, you know. Um, and, and I shared this not long ago in a video. And I think it was about this. But I was watching a documentary about the Ken and Barbie murders in Canada. And they videotaped their murders, a lot of them. And the things that they did to their victims. And the mother of one of the victims um, had to go to court and have it requested that the videotapes were demolished because every time those videotapes were watched over again, even if they weren't watched by her or whatever, but every time they were watched again in a court trial or whatever, she felt that it was her daughter having to go through, even though she had passed on, it was her daughter having to go through the traumatic experience over and over and over again. And it was such a poignant part of that video to me, you know? And so when you take somebody else's traumatic experience, and he did this, and, and Swoop shows this because she had this voice message from this victim in there. When you take somebody's traumatic experience without their consent and you share that, like, you're basically forcing them to relive their traumatic experience again. And and, and these people were asking Johnny to stop, and they were very afraid of Johnny, you know? Um, to some degree, I have to say, um, I noticed that he followed me on Twitter. I don't know why, probably because I've been co covering this um, Colin Ballinger stuff. But it was interesting because all these people were, like, really afraid of Johnny. And I was like, if I come in, out with a video and I, I talk about Johnny, is he going to say things about me? You know, because Swoop said that at the end of her video. She said, Johnny will probably come out with allegations about me. He'll probably come out about allegations about Adam. And I thought, is this person really that dangerous? Like, this is really scary, right? Like, and, and, and she even titled her video. Hold on a second. She titled her video, The Devil in Colleen Ballinger's Shadow. He lied to everyone, right? So, he does all this stuff, and then, like, at the end, Swoop said, just stop. Like, your victims want you just to stop. Like, now he has victims as well, right? And so, I'm, like, sitting there, and I'm thinking about, like, okay, all the timing of all this, right? And, and Adam came out with his response to Cody's video, and... And that was why Adam came out and talked about it, because new information had came out, right? And, um... 
it wasn't like Adam just one day woke up and said, I'm going to come up and bring this all up again, you know? That wasn't the case, and I think people forget that sometimes. And so Adam brought this up, you know, and and there was a part in um, Swoop's video when she was interviewing Adam McIntyre, and he starts crying. And uh, in all honesty, you know, he was on a vacation to Paris, and I thought it was just really so kind of him to like do this interview with him but he thinks it's important to set the story straight and I understand that right and I sat there and I watched it you know and as much crap as Adam and his parents have gotten through this whole ordeal you know Johnny was talking about how his parents are running to do these interviews and Adam's like no my parents have talked about that we don't want them doxxed we don't want them to like get public attention for this and whatever and you know I was sitting there and I was like watching Swoop interview Adam and it made me so sad and I thought like, Adam, like, ha is carrying the weight of the world in his eyes. Like, you could totally see it in a situation. Like, it wasn't like he asked for this, you know? I mean, he was a kid that had no clue what was going on at this time, right? And so, I, I mean, during a lot of this stuff, I mean, Johnny was working for Colleen Ballinger. He was a grown adult. He was 22, you know? Like, I, I don't know. I just... I, when I was Johnny's age, when he was saying that a lot of this stuff happened, you know, I, I had gotten sober and I had a full-time job and a lot of responsibilities and I was in a full-time relationship or I was full-time relationship. I was living with somebody, you know, and uh, we had a roommate and we're paying bills and I mean, I don't know. It's just, it was baffling to me, you know? And so, Adam comes out with his story, and then apparently that prompted Johnny and reminded him of all this stuff that had happened, right? And then he was like, um, um, even though, even though he says that Josh David Evans had his time in 2016 to come out and tell his story, but now Johnny comes out after all this time and he tells his story. So apparently there's no time limit on Johnny's story, but there's a time limit on everybody else's story. Okay. So he comes out and he tells his story after Adam comes out with his story. And his story is very similar to Adam's story, except for that he starts coming for Josh David Evans. Now, I have to tell you what's interesting to me about this, right, is that Adam is talking a lot about how Johnny was a huge advocate of Colleen Ballinger. And when Colleen put her apology video out to Adam years ago or whatever, like, Johnny even tweeted to her and said, um, which was not a real apology, but said, I'm so proud of you and whatever. And Swoop made some comment in the video about, like, I'm, uh, he was proud of her for sending lingerie to a, a minor and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, stayed very close to the Colleen Ballinger fandom. In fact, thought that that was going to be what got him his rise on YouTube. And it's very obvious that a lot of his motive for all of this was that he, you know, Adam talked about the fact that um, Johnny would ask him things about, like, you know, how do you monetize your channel, and that he was trying to come up with these allegations to get a following, and then he was going to come out and do a video talking about Josh David Evans, and that was going to be what was going to get him his start, you know? And I have to believe this, okay? And I'm just going to say this. There are a lot of people out there that believe that Adam got, like, a, a huge following on YouTube, because of his initial allegations on Colleen Ballinger from several years ago. And that's absolutely inaccurate. Um, I remember when Adam McIntyre, I kind of remember the time when Adam McIntyre came around and started making drama commentary videos about several different people. And Adam and I, until this situation, always got very similar views, if, if he didn't get less than mine. Um, he grew very, very slowly, like many of us do. Um, it wasn't like he did this video. I mean, I think people knew that he had come out with this video about Colleen Ballinger years ago. But it wasn't like the majority of his following was from that video. The majority of Adam's following was from Adam working very, very hard and passionately on a daily basis to put out drama commentary videos about many, many subjects, right? But I have to think that Johnny thought Adam put out this video years ago and kind of tried to emulate that situation. This is going to stop. Hold on. Okay. And I think he thought he was going to emulate that situation and then he was going to get a huge following off of this, these allegations. I, I kind of believe that that's what he thought to some degree because when you go back historically and you look, 
like from all this stuff that Swoop did, I mean, he really wanted to be a YouTuber. Like, he really, he, he, you know, he even says in there that his parents said he was, like, doing the thing or whatever, right? And that that's why they kind of, like, encouraged these relationships that he had. That's why he worked with Colleen Ballinger on and on and on, right? And so, that's really been his end result all along, is to be a big YouTuber or to big TikToker or have a big following as an influencer and things like that, right? I don't know why, and I could be completely off base, because I know that Johnny has made a lot of allegations against Colleen Ballinger as well. And I know he's come out and said horrific things about Colleen Ballinger. But in all honesty, the majority of his allegations are all about Josh David Evans, right? Somebody that Colleen Ballinger has no relationship with today was gunning behind the scenes to come for when they were going through their separation and divorce. And Johnny was part of that, okay? And I'm sitting here and I'm watching all this and I'm like, could he still be a super fan? I mean, he, he obviously is. He is like a, a let down super fan, right? And I, and I think that one of the things that you learn from making videos on YouTube, and I don't care if you have 5,000 followers or 5 million followers, okay? One of the things that you learn over time is that you can have somebody come and watch one of your videos and disagree with your opinion. You can have somebody that just doesn't like you, right? And you can have somebody that kind of trolls you a little bit and that's whatever, right? The people that really take issue with you are the ones that used to be diehard fans or really loved your, your videos. And for some reason, because of something that happened or something that you said, and there's not a YouTuber out there in the world that won't agree with me on this, okay? There's not a YouTuber out there in the world that will not agree with me on this. But that person out there that had undying love and support for you, something that you said or you didn't give them enough attention or you didn't respond to a DM or something out there, right? I've, I've experienced this many times, all right? For some reason, the tables turn and they are your worst enemy, okay? And they are gunning for you to completely fail. Well, that's kind of what happened in this situation, right? Josh David Evans and Colleen Ballinger did not give Johnny the attention that he needed. And he's obviously somebody that needs a lot of attention. So Johnny, here's your attention, okay? But that's obviously what happened. And, um, but I have to kind of wonder, was part of Johnny's motive, like I can't believe I would be the only one that would maybe be thinking this while I'm watching this, right? Is part of Johnny's motive to take attention off of Colleen Ballinger and those victims. This is why he continues to say that his story is more important and that on and on and on, right? To take attention off of the real victim stories about Colleen Ballinger and deflect attention onto Josh David Evans to get attention off of Colleen Ballinger. Like, as a super fan, I mean, was this like the ultimate favor that he was doing to her? That he didn't care if he like died at the stake? and look like an ultimate fool because he had to know at some point this was all gonna be exposed, right? He's deleting tweets, he's putting this up, he's putting, I mean, at some point he had to realize this was gonna be exposed. So was he willing to do all this at the expense of that, the person that he really was a super fan of was Colleen Ballinger? Like, I don't know, like, it's just, it makes me wonder, right? You know, and, and this is the other thing I want to say that's really sad about this whole situation and this interview and this six-hour interview that he did with her, okay? Where she literally asks him the same questions time and time again, and he will not give her a direct answer. She literally asks him for factual ev evidence time and time again, and he will not come through with it, right? So, and how many of you guys want to ask this? When she kept on asking him for the text messages with Josh David Evans, how many of you were thinking she was going to throw up those text messages? on Josh David Evans' side. I think that's coming because she's coming out and doing an interview with Josh David Evans, and I think he's going to show those text messages. I think that's going to be a big part of that interview. Um, but anyway, you know, one of the things I kept on thinking while I was watching this, and like I said, this is just like my true crime, you know, watching mind, that was that he's lied about so many things to do with... And this is why his story is so sad and so problematic, okay? And, and listen, the man obviously has some real issues, okay? I don't know what those issues are. I don't proclaim to understand what those issues are. But the man obviously has, and he is a man. He is 27 years old, okay? He obviously has some very, very severe issues. And he really needs help. Johnny, if you're watching this, please get some help, okay? Because he put out a statement, and I'll read it to you in a second, but he obviously doesn't think that he did anything wrong.
okay? And she asks him several times in the video to take accountability. And he doesn't see if there's anything that he needs to take accountability for and basically doubles down on his story. Um, I mean, I think she proved everything that was needed to be proven in this video. Unless you can come out with factual evidence that's not doctored to show what you are stating, which you couldn't even state with your own words and your own story. So I don't, I mean, if you had factual evidence, you would think in a six hour interview, this was your opportunity to provide that evidence, which you did not do. Even when she responded or called you and time and time again, you would respond and, and didn't give her the evidence and, and doctored evidence. I mean, it's just, it's, um, the thing is that is really sad about this story is number one, he really diminishes the story of the other victims. And so it's important, and this is one of the things that I always say in my videos talking about really important topics is, we've got to stay on the facts. We have to stay on the truth, okay? And this is the attention that Johnny wants. So I won't be speaking about Johnny again after this video because we need to get back to the facts, right? But that's the number one thing. The number two thing is that he made defamatory, serious, really sad allegations, okay? That were life-ruining allegations towards a man that no matter what his involvement was with this whole situation, and maybe we don't know that yet, okay? Um, and I'm just talking about in the context of this video, like I said. I, I'm not a defender of Josh David Evans or any of those kinds of things, but in the context of this video, he did not deserve those allegations from Johnny, okay? Period. I think we all know that after watching this video. But the, the third thing that's really sad about this is that now all of the things that he is saying, and, and I, I think that Johnny missed this, right? Like, Johnny didn't have to, and, and this is the really sick part of it. <clears throat> there was something that was driving Johnny to need to have a bigger story than Adam, to need to have a bigger story than the other victims, to be the spotlit person in this story, right? So that he could build a career off of that or get all the attention. That has to be it, right? Because he was an insider. He worked for Colleen Ballinger. He could have, there were, he was involved in a lot of these group chats and things like that. We know that now. It has been until very recently. There was a lot that he could have shared that would have been very damaging to Colleen Ballinger on, on its own. He didn't need to invent stories. He didn't need to come up with all these stories, but he did. And then what it makes you do as a person that sits here and watches these things logically is it makes you think, if he lied about all of this other stuff, then is he also lying about all of the Colleen Ballinger things as well? Like, what are we to believe, right? Well, what we are to believe is erase Johnny from the story and look at the facts from the victims that have come out with factual evidence. That's what we need to believe. So I just think, because I, I you know, I was watching it and I was sitting there and there was one part where she was saying, Swoop was saying things, Swoop was saying things about, um, you know, he said this about Colleen Ballinger or whatever and I thought to myself, like not as, you know, taking a side or whatever, but I thought to myself, but how are we supposed to believe Johnny about anything? I mean, he lied about everything. So if he lied about it, all of this, then are we just supposed to believe this part? I mean, how can we even believe what he says about Colleen Ballinger? We can't, right? So it diminishes even those stories. So then what we have to go to is we have to forget Johnny's entire story. And we have to go over to just talking about the, the real victims and what their stories are. And their stories are consistent and match and they have factual evidence, right? Um, I don't know. I think the whole thing is just really, really sad. And, um, you know, the more that comes out about this whole Colleen Ballinger, Miranda Sings fandom, it's so confusing to me. Like, in all honesty, like, this is where I do think I'm kind of a little bit old for some of these things because, like, I just watched, okay, not too long ago, and this is no comparison, but I just watched the Slender Man documentary on Max. And it's about these two girls, and many people have probably heard of the story, but they stabbed one of their friends, I think like 14 or 19 times or something, because they were afraid that Slender Man was going to come for their families, okay? They were 12 years old, and they completely bought in to this whole Slender Man meme video game thing, right? And I'm watching it, and I'm like, that's, I mean, I... When I was 12 years old, I mean, video games that we had were like <laughs> Pitfall and I don't know, like Ping Pong, you know, it was on Atari and Nintendo Basic, you know, it was like to believe in all of that stuff. I mean, we live in a different world today, right? And this is maybe where I'm a little bit too old for all of this. 
But to get so involved in a fandom, right? And then have all of these millions of people that are in group chats and all this kind of stuff. And Colleen Ballinger, who is so busy with all of this stuff, right? She's so busy with her tours and videos and interacting with other YouTubers and relationships in her life with her family and her, her boyfriend at the time and all this kind of stuff. She has time to be jumping in and, and, and uh, you know, controlling these group chats and these tiny chats and all this kind of stuff. I mean, what is so obvious to me is this woman is so consumed with power, fame, and money, right? And all of these people, there are probably hundreds of victims, if not thousands of victims out there, right, at the hands of Colleen Ballinger. All of these people, tons of lives ruined, okay? So that Colleen Ballinger could be one of the most famous YouTubers with a Netflix show, best-selling novels, and millions of fans. It was that important to Colleen Ballinger, you know? And I have to tell you, I went back last night and I went back to Colleen Ballinger's channel and I went back to her very, very first videos. And I don't know if she's deleted videos, but when you go back to her very first videos, it's of her sister, Rachel. And those are her first videos on her channel. And then there's like a musical, uh, 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 musical that she shows like clips of her behind the stage backstage and stuff and then it goes in and it's like pet peeve videos i mean she started on a very small level right and um and so she basically like was like everybody else that was just somebody that kind of got famous and got power i think the thing that makes me so sad right is that I can remember seven years ago, seven and a half years ago now, when I started on my booktube channel. And I remember that I was watching a lot of booktubers at the time. And I, I, I just was, as a reader and a lover of books, I felt so compelled to be part of that community. I never thought I was going to have more than one YouTube channel. I never thought that I was going to make money off of it. I never thought that I'd get any power or fame, which I don't have, right? That was never, like, anything that I thought about it. I thought I wanted to be part of this community of talking about books. When I started doing drama videos over here, I never once thought that, you know, I was going to have a following or whatever, you know, and things like that. And I still have people that are like, oh, I remember when you were at 20,000 or I remember you were at 40,000, right? And um, I can remember, and I said this not too long ago in a video that I remember somebody in early, my early years of YouTube telling me how much money they made on YouTube. And I was like, oh my God, can you even imagine if I could pay my, my bills with YouTube? Today I can pay my bills with what I do over here. But that's not it for me. I feel completely blessed to get up every single day and do something that I absolutely love, right? And call it my job. I get to get up every single day and make videos and be my authentic self. I just shared in a video the other day that, you know, like eight year old Peter was in my living room, you know, acting like I was auditioning for Annie. And now I get to come on videos and sing songs from Annie to thousands of people that watch my videos. And that kind of cracks me up a little bit. You know, eight year old Peter would have got a kick out of that. And today I get to be myself. I get to be too much. I get to live out loud, right? I get to cry on video. I get to laugh on video. I get to share stories with you guys on videos on six different channels. You know, and I feel very, very blessed for that. Colleen Ballinger lost sight about that, you know, along the way somewhere. And at some point it became about power, fame, and money to her. And I think that one of the things that you see with people when you hear Johnny's story, he's talking about his parents saying, well, he's doing the thing. Well, what's the thing? You know, my dad always said to me, do what you love but make sure that you're doing something that is also contributing to the world, right? And that's why I share stories of my recovery. That's why I talk about marriage counseling on here. My husband and I almost getting divorced and going to marriage counseling and saving our marriage. That's why I share about grief with my mother's passing and things like that. Because I want to be a small contribution. I want people to say, you know, like, wow, if Peter can stay sober, I can stay sober too, you know? Um, but for a lot of these people, I think the only reason they ever s turn on the camera to begin with is for the money, the fame, and the power. And it's so obvious to me that Colleen Ballinger and her whole team of people and groups around them and all these people, they've ruined so many lives at the expense of their, her audience, 
that many of them are victims and many of them were greatly affected by this and she used them for her power and fame and money, right? It's really so truly, truly sick. You know, and it goes so much deeper than just five or six people's allegations, which are very, very important and very, very serious and should be taken as such. You are talking about a woman that was so consumed with power and the abuse of power, you know? And I was looking at this last night because I remembered this, um, this quote about, you know, absolute power corrupts absolute power. And so I wanted to look up and see who, who made that um, comment or who made that um, original um, quote. And the quote is, power is dangerous. It corrupts the best and attracts the worst. Power is only given to those who are prepared to lower themselves to pick it up. And, you know, it's the power tends to corrupt and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And it is by um, Edward Abbey. Power is always dangerous. Power attracts the worst and corrupts the best. I also found this quote by Mr. Rogers and, um, you know, of the TV show, Fred Rogers. And the quote is, fame is a four-letter word like tape or zoom or face. What ultimately matters is what we do with it. Colleen Ballinger has taken her fame, her power, and her money, and she's turned it into something really dangerous, and you cannot convince me of that otherwise. And Johnny, you are a huge part of the problem. You have minimized people's stories. You've abused their stories. You have been abusive as well. You have minimized true victims and why and many, many other things you have done. I'm confused as, you know, was this all for just financial gain or YouTube, YouTube stardom or whatever? I don't know. I don't get it, you know. But to end this, I did want to share one of my favorite quotes with you. And if you've never seen the movie Fargo, it won't make any sense to you. But the sentiment, I think, is important. And it's the very end of Fargo. And Frances McDormand, who is probably my favorite actress of life, is in the movie and she plays a police officer. And this man has killed his wife and all of these people and has had all these hits out for people. And all these people have died, right? Just so they can get a life insurance policy. And at the very end of the movie, she's sitting in the car with them, right? And it's blistery cold day and the sun's shining outside. And she looks in the rearview mirror at him and she says, So, that was, Mr. that was Mrs. Lundegaard on the floor in there. And I guess that was your accomplice in the wood chipper. And those three people in Brainerd. And for what? For a little bit of money? There's more to life than a little money, you know. Don't you know that? And here you are, and it's a beautiful day. Well, I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. I don't understand any of this. It's so confusing and sad to me, and so many people have been hurt by it. And I don't care what the excuses are that Colin Ballinger is afraid of legal recourse and whatever. Please just allow these people suffering to stop. You know, Colleen Ballinger has the opportunity to do the right thing. Johnny has the opportunity to do the right thing. Corey has the opportunity to do the right thing. Just do the right thing. Come out and stop these people suffering. Take responsibility for it. Stop your abuse of power. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.